It's the end of an era at Peugeot. The French automaker stopped building its luxury sedan, the 607, in June, and won't be replacing it. Instead, Peugeot expects its new 508, due in September, to pick up the all-too-few who consider it a 607. The 508 will do its primary work a full class below, as it replaces the 407. It won't work, of course. Straddling two segments rarely does. Just ask the Rover 75. And even if it could convince someone to pay considerably more for the same basic design, Peugeot doesn't have the sales and servicing niceties to support an upmarket car. With Peugeot out of the near-luxury game, upmarket European buyers are running out of choices. The continent is awash in silver, white and black C-classes, E-classes, 3-series, 5-series, A4s, A5s, and A6s. There's the sublimely supple, expansive and eclectic Citroën C6 over at Peugeot's sister firm. Volkswagen will still sell you a Phaeton, and Honda's all-wheel drive legend is another outside bet. There's Lexus, and there will soon be Infiniti. But Renault, Ford, Opel, Lancia, Alfa Romeo, and now Peugeot are out of the luxury market, for the time being. Alfa's 166 and Renault's Velcity are long gone, and the last Lancia thesis quietly rolled off the line at the beginning of the year. It's hard to blame the French for throwing in the towel. They haven't been able to go head-to-head -head with German luxury since the Renault 25 of the 1980s. And while the 25 proved a surprisingly willing Autobahn companion, Peugeot lost the plot with the 605 of the same era, which looked too similar to its smaller, cheaper 405 sister and proved unreliable. Once, the Peugeot 604 was the world's first turbo diesel, a fine, refreshingly French barge with the refinement and class to match Mercedes. In recent years, buyers have chosen smaller, slower base models from Stuttgart, Munich and Ingolstadt over high-end Peugeots in droves. And it's a vicious circle, because the unwanted Peugeot in turn incurs horrendous depreciation, making a new one even less desirable. In size, the 508 is between the 407 and the 607. This is the first car to debut Peugeot's new design language, a break with the oversized headlights and grills of the past decade. It's a darn sight prettier than the pointy snouty 407, but it doesn't really stand out. That, in and of itself, need not be a problem if Peugeot can get back to building the sorts of cars that made it great. Conservative, sure, yet with all the sturdiness that implies and none of the statements. A smooth car, whose lines stand the test of time, yet one that is light on its feet. The 508 will, of course, have some great diesel engines, and even a unique selling point, in that there will be an all-wheel drive diesel hybrid, electrically powering its rear wheels. If it rides and handles like Peugeot's of old, then the Lion, which recently celebrated its 200th year in business, might yet be able to claw back some market share from the Ford Mondeo, Volkswagen Passat, and Opel Insignia. But that may be a tall order for a manufacturer which has not had a real hit since the old 406, the last Peugeot which could teach the Bavarians a thing or two about ride and handling. It wasn't flashy, but a more fluid drive you could not find, and that car debuted 15 years ago.